Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, and my Australian friends, it gives me very great pleasure to be able to take some part in your ceremony today. After nearly 20 years since I directed the transmissions from the high-powered station at Carnarvon, which resulted in the conveyance of the first direct wireless telegraph message to reach Australia from England and Europe. Over a considerable period, in fact, since the closing years of the last century, I have striven to give the world improved and cheaper means of communication by electrical transmissions through space. Not a little of this time had been devoted to the development of systems which would afford mariners a surer and safer aid to navigation and thereby a larger measure of safety and security for the passengers who traveled with them. My work in the cause of navigators on sea and in the air is not yet finished. It is natural that I should also have devoted considerable time and research to methods which would bring distant countries of the world into closer and more intimate touch with one another. There were many people, some I am afraid of high technical achievement, who discounted my idea, but encouraged by the results of my earlier experiments, and happily by so many who followed and appreciated my work, I could not be satisfied until my theories and ideas had been put to a practical test. In 1918, when I decided to make my first series of tests in an endeavor to reach Australia without the assistance of intermediate stations, I found Mr. Fisk, who is with you now, ready to bring to the experiment the wealth of knowledge and experience which he had accumulated. And on the 22nd of September of that year, two messages were transmitted from Carnarvon, from the Carnarvon station, by means of a 200 kilowatt multiple spark discharger, and received by Mr. Fisk, without any error, at the experimental wireless station attached to his residence at Wahinga, North Sydney. It should be noted that in the case of my first transmission across the Atlantic Ocean in 1900 and as in that to Australia, which is almost to the antipodes, the spark system was employed, which proves that the capabilities of electric waves to traverse worldwide distances was discovered by me long before the utilization of thermionic valves for transmission over any similar great distances. On your monument today is recorded the test of the first radio telegram to reach Australia direct from England as a result of those experiments. In a very much shorter time than it takes to read it, that message had covered by approximately 12,000 miles or more in his travel from the homeland, and thus was laid the foundation of the speedy and highly efficient system of wireless communication which today connects you with the capital of your empire and with other countries, serving so well the interests of mankind. Australia is indeed to be congratulated for having still at its disposal the services of so distinguished an engineer as Mr. E.T. Fisk, whose skill and research have been of inestimable value in bringing your wireless communication to its present high level of efficiency. I send him my most cordial regards. In conclusion, may I say that it has given me genuine pleasure to be associated with the unveiling today of the Warunga Monument to mark the now historic spot which had so important a part in my earlier experiments. It is indeed gratifying to me to know that the people of Australia appreciate the extent to which wireless has figured in their prosperity, for I firmly believe that without economical and efficient long-distance communications, no country can make much headway.